GT Countdown. The top 10 worst video game movies. Needless to say, this was not a tough countdown to find candidates for. The tough part was watching them. Again. Surprisingly, the Resident Evil trilogy squeezed out of this list's grasp thanks to the seductive charms of Mia Jovovich, despite the flaming awfulness of Part 3, Extinction. With the following 10 film flops, it's hard to come away with anything redeemable, and these movies only seem even more depressing if you're a big fan of the franchise. Unfortunately, here are the top 10 worst video game movies of all time. Number 10. Dead or Alive. There are two possible excuses for anyone who has left a rental store with Dead or Alive. Either you've mistaken it for the horror classic Dead Alive, or you're hard up for Kung Fu Cheesecake, or TNA and your mom won't let you rent rated R movies. Devin Aoki doesn't begin to fill the shoes or the mighty G Cup Raw of Kasumi from the DOA game, but the jiggle power provided by other cast members and a few decent action scenes keep it from rating any higher on our awful scale. Don't get us wrong, it's still really bad. Number 9. Doom. Doom was one of the most controversial video games ever released, but the only controversy surrounding the movie was thanks to scathing comments from critics. The New York Times called it a claustrophobic mess of a movie, while Real Views coined it a dreadful, hackneyed piece of cinema. Both were correct. Starring The Rock of professional wrestling fame, the story follows his band of mercenaries as it answers a distress signal from Mars. If only moviegoers had a button to push to get their money back. It's low on this list because some parts of it are so bad that they're funny, not the least of which is the end of the dreadful flick that attempts to mimic the game with its first-person perspective. Nice try. Number 8. Street Fighter. The first Mortal Kombat movie may have weathered the tides, but Street Fighter's silver screen treatment definitely got some hard knocks when it assaulted audiences in the 90s. First, the bad. The fights are awful, Guile's from Brussels, and apparently there are some cyborg soldiers we never knew about. But then the good, with choice cameos from the barely famous Kylie Minogue as the cannon drilling Cammy, and Asian cutie Ming-Na as a cocktail waitress presumed to be Chun-Li. Fierce as these feminine fighters were, their flashy moves just weren't enough to save this flick from a total knockout. Number 7. Wing Commander. How could a film directed by the creator of the video game series it's based on, in this case Origin Systems programmer Chris Roberts, drift so far from the source material? Casting Fred and Shaggy as the leads is a start, especially after Wing Commander 4 was graced with accomplished thespians like John Rhys Davies, Malcolm McDowell, and Luke Scott, we mean Mark Hamill. Chris Roberts has since confessed that he wasn't pleased with the furless appearance of the Kilrathi or their feline video game counterparts. Sixth time's a charm? And don't you die on me! Number six, Double Dragon. Dude, you must suck <laughs> video games. No, but this movie sucks at trying to represent one. We could forgive the Technicolor gang members, the Andy Dick cameo, copious amounts of high fives, Alyssa Milano's short hair, or a Bobo steroid problem, but we can't forgive the destruction of an actual Double D arcade machine. While Jimmy Lee may not have been the shadow boss, at least now, he's the chairman. I could... Number five. Mortal Kombat Annihilation. Despite riding on the tail of its semi-successful predecessor, Annihilation's C-grade special effects, low-budget porn dialogue, and after-school special combat result in the manifestation of the film's tagline, destroy all expectations. It did just that. The recasting is so bad, even Johnny Cage told his agent to kill him off. Instead of Billy Madison's lovable Miss Vaughn, we get a 40-something Sonya Blade with ranger shorts hiked up to her underarms, and a thunder god that appears to have skipped puberty. The final showdown between Khan and Kang, a haphazard 6th grade Play-Doh project, had us looking for the portal out of the theater. Number 4. House of the Dead. If someone invites you to a rave on a remote island known as Isla de Muerta, basic knowledge of Espanol will save you from a horrible zombie massacre. If someone invites you to see a Uwe Boll movie, basic knowledge of the director's other work will save you from a truly awful film. Even gratuitous nudity and gamey gimmicks can't save this cheese fest. If you watch the film, you'll suffer like G did, and then some. But don't feel too sad for the Sega logo. It's sadly seen worse. <laughs> Number 3. Alone in the Dark. 
Not long after closing escrow on the House of the Dead, Bull staked his claim on another piece of video game real estate with the film adaptation of Alone in the Dark. And f you anyway! Swapping mystery and intrigue for guns and washed up actors Christian Slater and Tara Reid. I don't believe it. The inadvertently hilarious action horror flick had little to do with the series and even less to do with common decency. And for desperate viewers holding out hopes for some shameless TNA, trust us. There are some things that you wouldn't want to get caught alone in the dark with. Number 2 Super Mario Brothers One would think that a film starring one of the most popular and recognizable characters on the planet would easily become a blockbuster. Even with this going for it, somehow Hollywood managed to find a way to deliver an epic disaster. As the first live-action adaptation of a video game, Super Mario Brothers left a dark stain on the genre that mars it to this day. Whether it was Koopa as a human, Goombas as giant reptilian thugs, the Mushroom Kingdom as a dystopian city, or the infamous cameo of the Super Scope, this film made even the staunchest Mario fanatic wince in agony. Bob Hoskins, the actor that played Mario, denounced the project in an August 2007 interview as a nightmare, and Shigeru Miyamoto admitted he regrets the film's creation. I am very disappointed in you, cousin. Number one. Blood Rain. If Uwe Boll is the Stanley Kubrick of crap, this is his space odyssey. It's long been rumored that Boll used to make a fortune off his projects if they sucked, and if that's true, then he made more money on Blood Rain than any of his other movies. Every actor is miscast, every wig is too fake, every sex scene is too inappropriate, and every action scene is too improvised. It's no surprise that the director that got away with wasting Ben Kingsley's talent also produced the worst video game movie of all time. 